What's up everyone, it's Fink here, bringing you guys another reaction. This time it's My Mentally Abusive Father. Um, this one comes from, oh my gosh, this one comes from Pajama Party Doodles, and she's another animator. This is the first video that I'm, I am reacting from her, to her, you guys know what I mean. Um, and I have a feeling, just by the title, that this is going to be a little bit darker than usual. So, just as a warning, heads up, uh, this might not be as happy-go-lucky. Uh, original link is in the description below, so make sure you check out that. And if you guys enjoy this, make sure to subscribe to her channel and also to like this video. And, uh, yeah, here we go. Let me be clear about something. This video isn't being made for the sole sake of venting. I've already come to accept everything that's led me to this point in my life and have taken the necessary steps to get the help that's I good. need. That's good. So please, don't see this video as someone crying out and reaching for someone's hand. That isn't what this is. In fact, this video is more for the people out there that may have gone through something similar and are still reaching out for that shred of hope. The ones that need to mm -hmm. hear that there's still a chance to feel better. I'm not a sad girl making a video and crying over the bad things that happened. I'm a strong and driven girl telling her story and praying it helps even one pain soul. The title of this video says it all. I have an abusive father. And I suppose it's rather strange to say out loud because for so many years I managed to convince myself that he was anything but. When you have a father, you're told a lot of things growing up. You're told that your father is someone who's supposed to look out for you. Mm -hmm. Someone strong and dependable in your life that exists yeah. whenever you and your family need <laughs> a stern but loving guidance. Someone sturdy you want to lean on when times are tough. They're the man of the house. The protector. Mm -hmm. The one who has earned your respect for raising you up to be more than you thought you could be. Or in simpler terms, a father is supposed to present a good example. My father was hardly a father to me. I call him father because that's the only label I've ever given him, and I respect him because I was raised to respect everyone. But make no mistake, my father often presented a poor example for his wife and children, whether he intended to or not. I can't pinpoint when the abuse really started, but I know it's been going on for what may as well be a lifetime. I have to clarify that he never laid a hand on me, but he never had to. My father was and still is the type to verbally cut you down to nothing. I know he's been through a lot in his life, and I know those experiences manifested into something foul. It hangs off my father's back and whispers little things here and there, poisoning his mind, spirit, and speech. He's a man that hurts, and has been hurt by people he was supposed to trust and depend on. I have to understand that. Or at least that's what I always told myself. When family hurts you, you naturally feel inclined to defend their actions. You try to convince yeah. your friends that they aren't <clears throat> so bad. You even try to convince yourself as a means of rejecting the pain. But abuse is abuse, no matter what color you choose to paint over it. And for a while, sure. my father was <clears throat> a pitch black silhouette, a figure <clears throat> the light tried to touch, but instead all we got to see was a cast shadow of the person he could have been, but decided he wouldn't be. Hardly the father figure, but often the abuser. And no amount of bad experience can justify abusing your family. Now I know I've been beating around the bush and holding off on explaining everything he did, but it's hard. And that's another thought I'm sure a lot of you in and outside my shoes have had. It's hard to come out and talk about what's been done to you. It's hard to admit the truth. But that's why I decided that I wouldn't keep quiet anymore. No more fear, or worry, or talking myself out of all the strife in my mind as if that will make it vanish. I will be for you what my father wasn't for me. Honest, transparent, and a good example. When I was a kid, my father lusted after me. Yes, this man I was raised by had been quietly sexualizing me. Something I blocked out for a long time and suspected, but very recently got confirmed. 
He didn't look at me as though I were a child, and he had perverted his image of me in doing so. And while I don't recall him ever touching me, it's as I said before, he didn't have to. While you're free to debate on the nature of this being sexual abuse or no, and believe me, you're free to believe what you will, I still have my experiences. I remember certain faces he made towards me, certain gestures and words that encouraged the wrong thing. He'd linger near my person and kept close in a way that sincerely gave me nightmares both as a kid and as an adult. The kind that nearly made me lose sleep. I won't give any nasty details, of course, they won't benefit any of us anyway. But I need you to recognize that a child shouldn't know that kind of fear and confusion right. ever. It just isn't okay. And while I should be grateful that my dad never touched me, and I am, that was but the first warning of oncoming abuse before he started getting far more direct. In the years that followed, my father tried to force me, my mother, and my brothers into a mold. From the beginning, he wanted us to be shaped in a specific image. He wanted us to dress a certain way, surround us with certain company, and above all, he wanted our absolute obedience. And for a while, you could say he had it, but time changes us all. Eventually, our mannerisms, clothes, and interests took a path apart from the one he laid out for us, which is why he started to demean us at every turn. My father would talk down to us, and if he wasn't shaming our decisions, he was shaming our very person. Most of the time, he talked behind our backs, but the words always found their way back to us in the end. I was no exception. In my father's eyes, I was an irresponsible disappointment. I was a liar that was always sneaking off to do bad things with awful people. Now, I can't say I was a saint, I'm not perfect, but not all my actions were worthy of that inconsiderate reaction. It felt like nothing I ever did was good enough for him. Something I'd said or done would always become something of a burden on him. Always something I should have second-guessed and felt bad for. And I guess, when I look at it that way, it's no wonder I started hating myself. When your own father makes you feel like you can't do anything right, when he makes it clear that he doesn't trust you, you feel broken. I felt like I was falling apart because the man that should have raised me was breaking me down. My actions, good or bad, didn't matter. He never really questioned or talked through why I did things. He just judged everything I did for years until he trapped me in my own self-doubt. And if he wasn't insulting me, he was insulting my brothers, if not them, then my mother. And God bless my mom because she went through the absolute worst of it. In trying to protect us from his words, he put her through hell. He made her feel like she was trapped in that hideous inferno with him. He made her feel powerless and worthless, like she was nothing. He made me feel like I was nothing. And finally, he wore me down. He made me feel this small. He made me into an object that he pushed his sick desires and expectations onto. He made me feel unsafe. He made me feel anxious. He made me angry with how he treated my family and started to ruin them. He made me fear life so much that I sought comfort and gratification in others to a point where I clung to them to an unhealthy degree because who else would I turn to? I made my friends into a toxic addiction. They were a drug and a safe haven that I didn't want to let reality into. I took them like pills constantly just to feel alive and when it wasn't enough I turned elsewhere. I turned to strangers that didn't care for my heart. I turned to distractions that couldn't heal. I tried to fill my mind with mindless nonsense just to stop the destructive voices in my head. They literally left me restless, they wouldn't keep quiet, they wouldn't shut up day or night, and eventually... I thought those dark, dark thoughts... He almost took my life on June 11th of this year. I hit a point of rock bottom more recently than I want to admit, and I'm sure some of you have too. 
it took me 23 years to get to that point where I felt so miserable that I didn't want to be alive anymore. That hurt me in ways that words can't describe. However, it only took a few days for me to remember it doesn't have to be that way. You struggle with suicidal thoughts. There is another way out. You may see that exit sign floating around the pills or the knife, but don't look at it. Don't approach it because exiting life is not the solution to it. You may not understand it now, but our time spent suffering is not even worthy of being compared to the reward and opportunity and joy that overcoming the pain can bring. I know life is hard. Trust me. In the process of trying to get the help that I needed, I had to make a lot of sacrifices so that I could learn to grow and find strength. And it was so, so hard. And the journey is gonna feel hard sometimes, and I know you may not like the idea of life getting any harder, but I promise you there are so many great things you can have and achieve when you choose to battle your anxiety and depression rather than taking it as it comes. When you choose to fight your personal demons instead of letting them in. Anger, rage, sadness, loneliness. None of that belongs in you, and absolutely none of that defines you. You are more. Look at yourself. I mean it. Look at yourself. Look at your face. Look at your hands. Wiggle your fingers. Look at that. You see? You're here. You're still here. You may be telling yourself, I'm weak, I can't do this, I can't keep fighting, but you are here because you're strong and despite everything you're going through, you're still making the decision to get out of bed, to breathe and do something. You think that just happens. You think it's easy. No, that is power. That is a body in motion, a body and a spirit that are still alive and aren't ready to go yet, that aren't ready to give up. So don't. Of course, everyone's situation is different, and it's easy for one person online to say life is worth living and things get better when I don't know what you're going through. But that's why you need to tell someone. You aren't weak for seeking guidance and help. You aren't weak for admitting you have a problem. Tell someone what's wrong and pray they lift you up because you've been staying down for far too long and you don't deserve it. Don't spend so much time measuring your worth or keeping quiet because, oh, well, how important are my issues or what good can someone like me even do? What can I offer and achieve when I'm like this? Because you know what? I am someone like you too. And I know I have a lot to offer. Even when I used to say I didn't. After all, I'm telling you guys my story and surely it's gonna touch someone the right way. This word will reach someone's heart and it will be enough to spark a positive change in at least one person, be it in a victim or a person who knows someone going through pain. And I wager to say that's pretty important. So if I can offer this much, just think about what you can offer. Believe me, it's not the end, guys. It's truly only the beginning. You still have the chance. You can still fight. You can still change. <sighs> Just take the first step. So I know I said in my last video that I was going to explain my health situation in the next end card, but I think you can all understand why my body and mind were a mess. Mm -hmm. This is why I haven't been pumping out content and kind of straying away from the yeah. online world. I've been <clears throat> doing my best to stay positive on Twitter. And I guess I kind of felt like I was lying to you guys sometimes because honestly, there were just so many days where I didn't feel up to doing a lot of things, but I didn't want to give up. I still wanted to spread a positive message. And even here, when I'm admitting everything that happened to me, I still wanted to make it positive for you guys because I know so many of you feel like you can't get help. And that's not true. There is so much more out there for you. Your life is so precious and meaningful, and I just need everyone that's listening to this to know that whether you're a fan or not, you're precious, and you need to stay alive. You have to. And I'm sorry to all the friends that I didn't tell this to. I'm sorry if I felt like I couldn't trust you. I'm sorry to any friends that I might have had to leave behind in the process of finding my strength, but I'm hoping that if anyone is listening, any of you guys, I just, I'm sorry, but 
I'm better. That's I'm good. okay. And it is my sincere wish that everyone else be okay <laughs> when they listen to this. I really hope it helps someone. I love you guys. Yeah. Get the help you need. Dang. I mean... First of all, there's nothing to be sorry about. Um, I know this is the first video that I've seen from from you, but no one who goes through the struggles, especially of abuse like that, should ever feel sorry when they come forward with it. I know it's very very challenging to to find the courage to admit that you've gone through so much more than anyone should ever go through um, and that video is so moving it takes so much courage to admit what you just admitted to the whole world. Even just admitting it to one person can be so difficult to do because you're finally coming clean after years of probably hiding this and going through this and it's hard. And not everyone knows and understands that it, that dealing with this stuff it's not easy. It's not just, you know, it's definitely a really hard thing to go through. I mean, I know for anyone, admitting your flaws or admitting when you're down is one of the hardest things to do. And it takes the bravest person to do because you want on the internet, especially on YouTube, you typically want people to think that you're this positive influence, that you, that you're this perfect image. And on YouTube, that is very possible to do. It is very possible to make yourself this perfect person who never goes through anything but in reality suffers the most but you, while you can do that it's a lot more admirable and a lot more real when you do have the courage to admit to the whole internet that yeah you're not perfect. You go through things too. You are human. And I think it's important for people to remember that YouTubers are human too. Whether it's Logan Paul or it's Pajama Party Doodles or The Odd Ones Out. We're all human. We all go through things. We all go through phases. And we all make mistakes. And sometimes those mistakes can ruin our careers. And sometimes they can grow them and embolden them. And while some things aren't excusable, it's important to realize that, yeah, sometimes people laugh up. That's not the case in this, of course. In this case, it's it's a very hard thing to admit that you don't live a perfect life. But I respect you, and I appreciate that you were able to do so, because it does take so much. You could have easily ignored it. You could have easily just never said anything right you could have left that to your personal life and just kept that with you but in a way admitting it to the internet almost acts as some sort of therapy because suddenly you're not the only one who knows 
And now you can see the support and the people around you that care about you and would never want you to go through that process of an abusive relationship or even hard times. I'm glad that you are now here, are still here and able to tell this story because it is a remarkable accomplishment to get to the point where you don't have to worry anymore, where you don't have to suffer as much anymore. And that's really good. So make sure you guys support Pajama Party Doodles channel. Link will also be in the description down below. And if you guys ever have to deal with something, or you know, no matter what it is, and trust me, okay, nothing is ever too petty to tell someone about. If you think that something you're going through is making it hard or is, you know, affecting you the way you live, it's okay to tell someone. It's okay to count, to, um, to talk to someone. You know, it's okay to admit when you're not doing so well. Whatever, whatever the reason is, it's never a stupid reason. I mean, sure, yes, sometimes people can over-exaggerate and over-dramatize something, but it's never the... It should never be the reason why you don't want to tell someone. It's always important to try and tell someone rather than to not. Because telling someone lifts the burden off of your shoulders an extreme amount. And if you don't want to tell someone, what I find is that writing it down in a journal or a diary or whatever is extremely satisfying. Just getting it all out of your head. Just write it all down. And sometimes I just take a pen, I take a journal, and I just let my brain write. I don't talk, I don't say anything, I just let my fingers do the work. And I find that easier than to just tell, than, than, the, than to just say something. Because sometimes writing it down is a lot easier than just trying to say all of your thoughts at once. Um, and writing it down certainly helps. Because while you might not be telling anyone, it kind of makes it true. Everything that you write down is true. Because why would you, I mean, why would you lie to yourself when no one can read it? And it kind of acts as this relief that you don't have to burden it anymore. At least you did something to let it all out. To not have to think about it. And of course, if it does get to that extreme, you know, the extreme point, yes, you should tell someone. You should let someone into your life. Let someone know. The only way that you can get help is by telling someone. Whether it's the help you want or the help you need, it is important to just say something. And I know it's hard to do. I know it's a lot easier for someone to say, hey, why don't you just tell someone versus actually doing it. Um, and sometimes it is very scary because you don't know if people are going to understand what you're going through or how people are going to react to it. And that can be hard. That can be really hard to do. But gaining the courage and the ability to do so, that's awesome. If you guys ever want to talk about something, hit me up. Uh, 
DM me, private message me somehow, send me an email. The Fabby Phoenix TV at gmail.com is my business email if you ever need to talk. Um, hopefully it doesn't come to the point where, you know, you do need that motivation to talk to someone about, but if you do need someone, I'm here. Also, there's also the suicide prevention uh, lifeline numbers and all of that that you can contact as well if you don't want to tell me or if you don't want to tell someone that you know. You, know, you, you can talk to them as well. Um, and anyways, thank you guys for stopping by. I really appreciate it. Leave a like on this video if you guys enjoyed it. Don't forget to subscribe for more content and uh, comment down below. Just leave a comment. I don't care what. Um, but just leave a comment down below. And, uh, yeah. Let your flames be high and bright for you guys. Are amazing. Peace out and have a good day. I'll catch you guys next time on the Flame TV. Peace out and stay awesome, guys. It's been a blast. Thank you guys so much for stopping by. Hope to see you guys in the future. Peace out and uh, thanks for watching. Bye-bye. <laughs>